full moon day, full moon of January, isn't it? So we have a month till the full moon of February, which is the Manka Puja. To practice, cultivate the way. And it's, uh, it's important to, to keep in mind that, that how, to, how to develop, how to watch and keep track of things so that your, your, your practice just doesn't become perfunctory and habitual. Because, uh, cultivating the way is, means that you, you have to really be vigilant and use wisdom, alertness, not just, not just uh, develop meditation habits. One way of brightening the mind to... to uh, realize it's important to practice samatha meditation, to take time to just concentrate on something, either mantra or anapanasati, <coughs> metta pavana, way of uplifting, brightening your mind. The mind is pure, isn't it? Mind, the pure mind, but then we can get stuck in negativity in depression and feeling just uh, in, a, in very um, low and negative states of mind, doubt and despair, depression. And so when one way of, of um, say, development is to, is to realize that the mind is something you can actually work with. You can whatever you put into it, it becomes that way. Until you really understand the true nature of mind, the true purity of it, then of course, uh, until you really trust that and abide in that purity, then it's helpful to to develop uh, samatha as a positive, it's, a, it's the way of being positive, of using positive uh, and refined and inspiring uh, images or nimittas. So it's like, for one thing, like devotional uh, practices of uh, taking refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha, in, in, in uplifting your mind, reflecting on the, the goodness of your life, contemplating the, the goodness the, uh, here at Amravati, the, the moral commitment, the the high standard of, it, of personal integrity, the, the generosity of the lay people, the supporters that offer food and, and requisites to us so we can practice. So reflect on your own commitment. That, that is, you're, you're now uh, putting yourself into a position where the very best, <coughs> you can, you can you, the very best is, is uh, your goal, to realize the ultimate Reality to be free from all delusion. So whether you, the negativity might revolve around old habits of thinking that you can't do it or you're not good enough or whatever, or maybe personal dislikes or peeves or irritations about this person or that person or whatever. But that, if one just endlessly can find fault and find something to be irritated with, in the sensory, sensory, sensory world. There's no, anywhere you go, there's, an, there's always somebody or something that can irritate us, just the way the world is. But in Samatha, you're actually developing very, this, uh, this power of positiveness. A lot of, a lot of uh, these modern, uh, like these Soko Gakkai, uh, Nichi Ren mantra type uh, cults are just centered around positive thinking. Namo myo ho ren ge kyo, namo myo ho ren ge kyo, over and over. <clears throat> and you just 
pray to get a new Rolls Royce or something like that. And they, it seems to work. <clears throat> and seem, people seem to get the things they want by being positive about everything. <clears throat> but <clears throat> that's not... That, that, that can be merely a <clears throat> another obstacle on the path because our goal is to help... I hope you aren't here to get a new Rolls Royce or to get a Rolls Royce or anything. <laughs> because of the way it is, you see, if you if you put something beautiful into your mind, then that then you you're experiencing a moment of beauty. Like when you look at the flowers, it's actually a moment of beauty. Your mind is uh, in consciousness, those flowers uh, are in the consciousness. So that is, they say, the flowers are beautiful. But the the um, habit tendencies are strong to to uh, to always to to be in this restlessness of the mind, where the mind just wanders about. It doesn't. It uh, even with with even surrounded by beautiful things, we can still. Uh, our mind can just wander all over the place. So you might just more have momentary glances at the flowers and for just a second maybe, if that long, uh, 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 an impingement of beauty is there. But, but it's, never, it's never appreciated, never cultivated. We're never uh, deliberately cultivating this unless you start uh, practicing meditation. Samatha meditation is, is that way. One can take, uh, depending on one's particular uh, character. I mean, different things are, you know, not same thing. It doesn't always work for, this, for everyone. But uh, with anapanasati, now say, really think of uh, when you're doing that. Of say following the inhalation and exhalation, I used to find the contemplation of peace being very... Uh, I found that very powerful meditation. I used to breathe in just peace and fill my whole body with this sense of peace and then, then exhaling the peace out to, to the whole world, the sense of peacefulness. And keep saying the, the peace, the, the English word, the English words seem how have meant little more than any other foreign word. So, just uh, the meditation on peace with the breath. I could get very, very high on that, very peaceful. Just that suggestion. I used to do that with letting go. Years ago, and I had this powerful insight into the second noble truth, and I. And I just practiced letting go for about two years. He said it's mantra. Letting go. And I used to inhale on let and exhale on go. <laughs> letting go. And uh, and I found that, that that was another upaya that I developed that I found very effective towards just just stopping the thought process of the wandering mind. Uh, letting go, of course, is a kind of le- releasing thing. Peace is, is a very tranquilizing uh, concept. And whatever you fill your mind with, you become that way. <clears throat> if you think of all the uh, unpleasant things that happen or the stupid things that people do, then you become that way. You become someone who's discontented and grumbling, complaining, uh, angry about the way the world happens to be. Because if you if you just fill your mind with that kind of those kind of perceptions, you become that kind of thing. You're like that: a grumbling, complaining, discontented, blaming, critical type of person. With metta practice, and the uh, the uh, that uh, loving kindness. That's just a, that's a very powerful meditation sense of loving kindness, may I be well, is, it, is always aimed at first towards towards this being here. And it's in and, and it's the uh, 
uh, conventional I. It's it's not a sense. It's not an ego. You know, it's not to think of me I as a person and as this person and be well, but it's the sense of of goodwill and well-being towards this 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 form that we call ourselves. That's very important in meditation to have a sense of have self-respect. It's important to respect yourself. And that doesn't mean you know, from from the from the from an egotistical position. Self-respect is is the ability to uh, appreciate these forms that we find ourselves in, and 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 we get self-respect by doing good by being moral, by being generous and kind. Well, you, can't, you can't respect yourself if you're selfish, if you're immoral, if you're um, mean-hearted, all these stingy uh, and uh, cruel, all these <laughs> tell lies, all that. This is just, uh, we can't, you know, there's no way one can respect oneself uh, if one is involved in in that kind of immoral, unskillful activities or speech, wrong speech. The more you 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 gain self-respect, just through through uh, sila and through uh, dana, through being generous, kind, moral, and then you, the self-respect is a, is uh, is a natural way to feel towards yourself. Sometimes the tendency to to just condemn uh, to I mean the, in uh, many people are very uh, uh, you know obsessed with their own faults <coughs> and their, their what they consider failures or faults or problems uh, the things they've done in life the the bad things they've done in life or whatever and so that. So that this this tendency to not respect yourself is very strong, to to blame yourself or to to disparage yourself as a person, and this is uh, you know, the, uh, and I and all of you I know none of you have really ever done anything that bad where you just have to sit here and uh, think that you're just totally horrible help. A useless being. I mean, we've all done things in the past that that we uh, might wish we we hadn't have done or something. That that's the way we learn from life, isn't it? We're not we're not uh, we, it's not, there's no uh, usefulness in dwelling on on the on the uh, flaws and faults that you see or what you think are your or is yourself. So metta is is a way of of being kind and and developing uh, self respect and even being kind to the and and accepting your failures and faults, not justifying them or dwelling on them in negative ways, but being able to just accept the fact that that uh, maybe you, you you're not everything you'd like to be or or you, the memories of your past or the things that that you feel guilty about or whatever be, and begin to just accept that in a kindly way rather than than endlessly uh, try to repress it or dwell on it in with negative thoughts so metta is a is a kindness being a, what what is kindness contemplate kindness And not just a sentimental kind of smarminess, not just being soft and wishy-washy, but real kindness takes uh, is is a, is a you have to rise up. You have to you have to accept things and and be kind to to that which maybe you don't like. Mm. Isn't it? It's easy to be kind to those we like. And it's easy to be kind to animals uh, and to uh, little children and 
and be kind to I mean be, be kind to uh, people who are down and out and be kind to all kinds of uh, say beings that we feel sorry for or we feel attracted to but c- sometimes we aren't kind to ourselves or we don't feel much kindness or acceptance of the people close to us who we find irritating or who we're angry with or or uh, critical of that live very close. It's much easier to spread metta to a billion Chinese you don't know than to having metta for the monk sitting next to you who's breathing too loud in a silent meditation. One good monk or nun who might be snoring Or sometimes one just feels averse and angry. A billion Chinese, much easier to spread oodles of metta over to a billion Chinese who who might be snoring, but you can't hear it. (laughs) So metta is is always, first we start with the immediacy of this, this being here, which sometimes we don't like either. Sometimes we don't like ourselves very much or or uh, we feel uh, have a tendency to disparage. So we stop that with mental. We aren't sitting here thinking about what we've done wrong or how you know, being negative, but having a kindness, even towards our weaknesses, which doesn't mean we we um, we're justifying weakness or or faults, but it means that we're we're not dwelling on it in a negative way. We're not obsessed with our failures or our faults, and metta is a, is a skillful means of dealing with that. <clears throat> we're not measuring this this being with the very best, and saying, because I'm not the very best, then I'm no good. That's that's very cruel, isn't it? Is it? To say, to say, compare yourself, your appearance, or your character, or your abilities with with the very best. Then, of course, you're always going to feel useless and hopeless because uh, what you think is the best is uh, something else, isn't it? It's not what you have to live with. You have to live with this being, this form, this character for a lifetime. So it's very important to have a proper attitude towards yourself, this, se- this sense of self-respect, kindness, acceptance, patience, understanding about the way things are, so that your life within this form is something that you begin to appreciate. <clears throat> Being the way you are, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Even having the we, we all have to learn from our own particular faults and failures also, from our shortcomings. So that we, 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 have, we, we, we must learn from the way it is for each one of us. The way life is for this being. I can't learn from the way life is for you because I'm only with you brief moments in eye consciousness or ear consciousness or nose consciousness. <laughs> but I've had to be with this creature for many years now. And uh, so that this is and, and until the, till this this creature dies uh, is it, uh, be that I have to be with this form and it's and it's uh, and the character traits and tendencies. So metta, say, as a way of, of of having goodwill towards this towards yourself, willing the good, self respect. And then 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 from from that from from may I be happy, may all beings be happy. And so then this this sense of well being 
kindness, acceptance goes outward towards all the other beings who we can possibly conceive of from the from the the, the what those we love and like and trust and respect to all those that we don't like. With metta, it's not a matter of liking. It's not liking. You can have metta. For, you can have metta for those you don't like, which means well, goodwill towards the, your enemies, goodwill towards people who irritate you or don't, or or uh, insult you or have hurt you. It's the sense of goodwill doesn't mean you're not. You, it's impossible to like someone who's your enemy. Someone who's an enemy, it, you can't like. You can only dislike them. But you can have metta for your enemies. So metta practice is a part of our life. Every day we we send forth this this goodwill, kindness to all beings, and. Uh, and it's a way of, of really opening our hearts to I mean, to to be able to to uh, send send forth from from our from our minds good thoughts, good wishes. Because at that moment, that is an energy going out from us, and it is and it is good. It's, it might not, you might not, you think, well, it doesn't really amount to very much because it's nothing you can measure. You can't measure how much your metta practice is affecting a billion Chinese that you don't know. But that's not the, that's not the, uh, uh, something that we, we need know at all, is it? The fact is that, that, that we can, we have this ability, this miraculous ability to generate good thoughts and to spread metta with our minds. It's quite a, a, a miraculous thing to do, isn't it, when you, when you think about it, when you contemplate that, being able to, to think kind thoughts, beautiful thoughts, send good wishes. That's a marvelous uh, thing to be able to do. With your mind, that's to be able to really to. I used to contemplate what is the kindest or most beautiful thought I can think of, and just trying to to understand how the what the mind is, how what is in in conceptual terms, what is the the finest, the best thought concept in the human in in any language. What is the worst? And then of course you have love and hate and and the you know the the superlatives and the the that which is the the, the most the most grand the most beautiful total and complete and utter absolute kindness love generosity. total and complete selflessness. You can think of on and on and on the, the kind of the, the ultimate thoughts of a human mind. And the meanest. What are the meanest, nastiest kind of thoughts that a human being can have? That's, that's a, a thinking is, is a miraculous gift we have which which we do all the time and, and we use very badly most of the time. But yet it is a marvelous thing, that, that uh, a miraculous gift that we have. That we can actually think. And that we can conceive the best and the worst. We can actually think, may all beings be well. All beings. And that means that, that that's... Uh, all embracing a thought that we can generate from our minds 
that is that we can think of the welfare of all beings. So that shows, you know, the kind of of uh, power of of our human condition that we can actually conceive of a totality. No, we're not just earth-bound uh, animals or just caught in our own species. We're not just may all only the Buddhists be happy. <laughs> that we can actually we can we can conceive of of all even the even the Muslims. <laughs> Even, even the Christian, <laughs> uh, and the demons, don't we? We we pray for the demons. The uh, Amina Punya. What other religion would pray for demons? Just in our own tradition, the Buddha Dhamma Sangha is Buddha is is the superlative form of the knower, the 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 one that can think and know ultimate truth. It is a, it is a fantastic word, Buddha, Buddhi. It's it's a, it's universal intelligence. Buddhi is universal intelligence. Buddha is a personification. It is a, it is a word of, uh, that means a total knowing, totally, total undiluted being. Dhamma is, is, um, is another marvelous word we have. It, you just don't have such words in the English language. Dhamma is it, 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 truth is just not even doesn't even come close ultimate truth or something like that but it is such a an all embracing it is the word that that has everything and no thing it is it is the the superb ultimate word dhamma because <laughs> every other word fits into dhamma every other symbol God and and uh, the devil, heaven, hell, the deities, the demons, the hungry ghosts, the Brahmas, Vishnu and Shiva, the whole lot, Jesus Christ, Muhammad, all of them, the whole gamut from A to Z are Dhamma. They all, it's all Dhamma. So that is a that is, you can't you can't have a you can't can't do better than that. Dhamma is it. So I mean, we, we might as well. <laughs> That's why we have to take the word into the English language. There's no point in trying to get a kind of um, pukey English translations. But the uh, sangha. This means community, but it also has the. It, it is sangha is the is the group, isn't it? It's we're it, the sense of community of being a uh, a group of religious seekers. It's not just me as a person, one isolated person on a on a religious path. It's a sense of a, of of sangha that we take refuge in. All the seekers, all the supatipanos, ujjapatipanos, and so forth. All those who are doing the good, practicing the good, uh, the direct, the clear, the, the, the truly sincere in what they're doing. So that that these these are words, and these are marvelous words, aren't they? That that we have, we can actually create concepts. 
with our mind. <clears throat> now, no other creatures that we can see or know on this planet can do that. This is a, this is definitely the, a, a human gift, a special human ability. We can now conceive of global villages. These kind of Aquarian age words are now becoming quite ordinary. Human family, global village, one ecological unit, the planet, Earth. I mean, these are these are quite. Uh, new to humanity, aren't they? Um, even like 30 years ago, nobody ever talked like that. Only 30 years ago, no one ever really. There's a, a few visionaries, maybe, who, who actually thought in those terms, but generally speaking, they, the, the, those words were unheard of or never used. Human, family, global village, uh, seeing the earth as one living being. Uh, the understanding the, the totality of, of the universe. Uh, we, people say even 30 years ago we're so caught up in just their little space and their little countries and that it takes how it's, it's been a, quite a jolt to the British to even think of themselves as in, in expanded terms as being Europeans. <laughs> They've resisted that one for ages. Human family, I don't know if the British will ever... <laughs> now, what we think, you know, when we, when we think in, these, in this way, it's a very skillful way to think. To think of human family rather than my country and or my, my ancestral family, uh, as a, that is a only the, the only family I care about. Because we can, we, we can expand our minds. Our minds can be very narrow, very mean, just, just this person, and that's all. That's all I care about. I'll spread it to this person, but I don't care what the rest. The rest can all just go to hell. It doesn't matter. Or just my, my, my group, that's all I care about, just, just my friends, or my country, uh, just my country, and the rest I don't care about. But then we keep, keep opening up wider and wider to the human family, to all beings, to all races. And then now we're, we're not thinking in terms of... of uh, white people as being somehow more important than others. Now that doesn't ring true anymore, does it? We, only really stupid and foolish people think like that. So we, we, we see that, uh, that uh, we feel a connection as human beings with all others, with the Africans, the Asians, the whole lot. It's a human family. And that when we think like that, then that gives us a much... We, then we think of them as family rather than as, as, as not family. If they're not family, then it, what happens to them is not important to us. But when it's family, then it, it is important that, we, that, that they don't starve and they have enough... They have proper facilities to survive and, and the Armenians uh, can uh, rebuild their country and the uh, Bangladeshis and the Sudanese and so forth because they're family. They're no longer just foreigners over there that don't really matter. This, this is how one, one human being sitting here like myself or like you can get a feeling and actually create this miracle in our mind of, of a totality and an all-embracing beauty kindness, a compassion, a joy. This is, this is, when you think of it, when you contemplate, this is, this, this is quite a miracle that we can actually do this. And when we do it, of course, the mind is bright because this is all very good. When you think like this, then you feel inspired and your mind is bright because 
This is what goodness does when you think in good ways and kind, generous, loving, uh, compassionate ways. Uh, the very goodness itself is is the reward, isn't it? You feel good, you feel happy, you feel inspired, you feel uplifted by the nobility, the grandness that we can generate in our own minds. But if we get selfish and mean and spiteful and jealous, then it's ugly, isn't it? You have to sit here with a with a mind all full of spite and anger and complaining and grumbling and and it's an utter hell realm. The mind just contracts and shrinks into a nasty little thing. So that the the uh, you you begin to see how to to train and work with the mind, how to develop it. Samatha very much is is the way of developing that very positiveness. the way of brightening, uplifting, inspiring the mind. Then as you, as you uh, cultivate the Eightfold Path with Vipassana, then, then you, you see you, you have that insight into the nature of things. You're not just caught into positive thinking. As, you're not just one who's creating but you can let go of that because you see all that arises ceases and you realize an ultimate reality that is truly peaceful and gives you complete and an accurate understanding of the way things are is the right understanding Now this community here, the, when you when you, no matter on a personal level, sometimes we irritate each other or frustrate each other, whatever. But but contemplate. This is the, the very good community, of people who've made a strong commitment to dhamma and to the good, the will to do good, and living in a in under moral uh, restraints. So these, 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 whether we like them, like each other all the time, is not is that asking too much. Not a matter of liking, but everyone here is worthy of respect. And so that when we contemplate and we appreciate each other more for the for the goodness of our lives and the commitment we uh, we've made to to the holy life. And, and therefore, the, on the personal level, whether we we are irritated or annoyed or angry or whatever with somebody, it's in a perspective, isn't it? We're not we're not exalting that and making that a kind of obsession in our mind because we we understand the nature of our mind and how it works. So we're we're not just caught in in uh, in kind of dreadful habits and obsessions when we understand how our mind really is and what our true nature really is. Now, in this country, there's also a tendency to be very cynical, isn't it? In Britain, a lot of the humor and uh, attitudes are to uh, are co- towards kind of being critical and disparaging, and uh, to really kind of cringe at positiveness. So that because the British don't like a kind of smarminess or or kind of syrupy, sweet paeons of praise and sickly kind of sentiments. In one way it's very good that, that people here are not given to, to uh, kind of being foolish in their and uh, over-enthusiastic about things. 
getting carried away with things. Uh, but the, the, the danger lies in, in being stuck in intensity to, to be negative towards the good, thinking of it as being uh, silly or foolish or not real. I heard when Ajahn Ananda was teaching the metta practice down in Chitter, some of the monks had quite a time with that. Because they, they just felt averse to Ajahn Ananda's metta. <laughs> because there's something in us also that wants they may all be me well. There's also another reaction that wants to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, this isn't this isn't a a, a just a sweet society of naive uh, do-gooders. That's not what I'm asking. But we're learning how to develop things, how to develop the mind. It takes wisdom. We do need our critical faculties and we, and it isn't very nice to kind of swing into silly sentimentalities and, and um, do-gooder type attitudes. I mean, I, I don't like that myself. I have no... I feel kind of sick at my stomach with a lot of, of uh, things that people, you know, think are so wonderful. <laughs> but I do appreciate the ability of the mind to, to create positiveness and beauty. And, uh, and that, is, that is a miracle. And it's not coming from foolish sentimentality. It can come from wisdom, from, from understanding. So see, metta is that. It's something, not a, not a, 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 a weak sentiment or just a, a nicey nice thing to do, but something quite powerful and real and, and coming from wisdom and, and make it a strong, a sense of strength rather than a mere kind of uh, pallid uh, sentiment. With the um, sharing of, of blessings, the punya, imina punya, this is this is another thing that Westerners find difficult to comprehend: the idea of merit and punya. <coughs> but in in the context of of Buddhism, of course, it, it, it is a very important uh, aspect of any Buddhist's uh, attitude and, and way that one relates to to the world. It, is that we're in this world and we, we, we're living here and we do what is, we try to, to use our lives for blessing it. It's some, I mean, admittedly, sometimes people um, think in kind of superstitious terms of doing good work so that they get a kind of, kind of points or gold stars and, and then they, in the next life, they get on, get a, a reward for all the good things they've done in this one, which, which is really, which is a, uh, a kind of popular interpretation, but that's not really what it means, because uh, it's 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 its own reward. Just like like thinking a good thought right now, a kind thought, it, in that very moment, in this very moment of that kind thinking, there. That is a happy. That there is a happiness there. It is its own reward. It's not. It's not that I'm going to I'm think kind thoughts so that that I'm making these uh, points accumulate uh, these little uh, points so that when in my next life I'll I'll be reborn in a better place than I was in this one. The fact that that punya or or what is like a blessing or a, what is truly meritorious or fine or good, we try to do. And, and to, we try to use our lives as a blessing for others. So that our, how we live, what we do, what we say is, is a blessing. 
is, 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 is a grace, a goodness being uh, coming from us for the welfare of other beings. And that is real punya. And the reward is the fact that that is just a lovely way to be right now. Isn't it? It's not that you're going to, you're not asking for a reward in the future because it is worth being that way now. That kind of thinking, that kind of action, that kind of speech is, is, is uh, the reward is that it's, it's blessing us right now. When we're aware, we appreciate that. When we're aware of how things are, then we, then we, we find delight in thinking good thoughts and in doing good works and in using our speech in skillful and, and uh, right ways. So in our, this retreat, they, all the, 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 uh, the sila here, the, all the people keeping the, the precepts and the people giving the dana and the, and the uh, practice, the, those practicing the pavana and the, the, uh, all the goodness, the blessing, the punya of this retreat, may it be for the welfare of all sentient beings. Now that is a absolutely marvelous thing to say, isn't it? All that is you can possibly do that is good, say that is that is right and honest, and all that is beautiful and true and worthy to think, and try to live our lives in such a way that our very existence on this planet is a blessing, is blessing all sentient beings. You, know, you can't you can't possibly think greater than that. That is the ultimate. In, in ultimate kindness, in, in just our ability to think. Now, of course, it, it, if it's just a perfunctory thought, then it, then it doesn't have much power. But our intention, isn't it? We're, we're actually living here, keeping these precepts, committed to monastic discipline, practicing the meditation. I mean, we're doing everything that we can to uh, everything that that any individual could possibly do. The, the restraint, the, the whole, the whole uh, uh, mood and atmosphere is one of, of wholesomeness and goodness, virtuousness. So at this time, this retreat is a, is a special offering for the welfare, for world peace. Let's make it for world peace, for awakening uh, more and more human beings to Dhamma and for the welfare and happiness of all sentient beings.